So welcome to our service today. It's great to have you with us and sharing with us. We're going to be celebrating God's love together. And we're going to start by singing God's love is big. And Ella's going to pop up on the screen um, to do the actions for us. Um, so get on our feet and worship him. Just before we do that, I'm just going to read from Ephesians 2. And let's read this together. The words will pop up on the screen for you. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show his incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen. Gather me the universe, the earth, the sun, the moon and stars as a place in his heart for me. From the beginning to the end, God will always be my friend So I can jump and shout Cause God loves me God's love is big God's love is great God's love is fair beneath my name God's love surrounds me every day And I love to sing and say God's love is big God's love is strong God's love goes on and on and on God's love surrounds me every day And I love to sing and say God loves me Since before the world began, God knew me and had a plan for my life and how I'm gonna be. He sent Jesus to be my friend, show his love will never end. So I can jump and shout, God loves me. God's love is big, God's love is great, God's love is fair and he's my mate. God's love surrounds me every day, and I love to sing and say, God's love is big. God's love is great, God's love is fab and he's my mate. God's love surrounds me every day, and I love to sing and say, God's love is big, God's love is strong, God's love goes on and on and on. God's love surrounds me every day, and I love to sing and say, God loves me.
be a lord. Thank you that you love us as a perfect father. Thank you that you are strong and powerful. Thank you what, that you never stop watching over us. Thank you that you forgive us. Thank you that you promised to be with us. Amen. So thank you, Marcus, for just sharing uh, that prayer with us. We have so much to thank God for. And we're going to be learning more about how to be thankful in the wilderness uh, with Nick later on and throughout this uh, new series um, through Lent. Um, and we're going to continue our worship now with uh, singing God So Loved the World. It's such an amazing truth um, to sing together. So let's just celebrate and worship his holy name. <laughs> Come to the well that never ends dry Drink out the water, come and thirst no more So come all you sinners, come find his mercy Come to the table, he will satisfy Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for from Luke chapter 4 verses 1 to 4 from the New International Version of the Bible. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left Jordan and was led by the Spirit 
into the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. Luke chapter 4 verses 5 to 8 The devil led him up to him in a high, to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has all been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, answered It is written, Worship the Lord your God and only serve him. Luke chapter 4, that is 9 to 13. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift up in their hand so that you will not strike your foot against any against us so Jesus answered it is said do not put your Lord God Lord your God to the test when the devil had finished all of this tempting he left him until an opportune time so this week we start a brand new series and we're going to stick with this series throughout the season of Lent and leading up into Easter. This week you've got me doing an introduction and next week our service is led by the elders using Zoom again. So there'll be details at the end of the service about that. So what are we looking at? Well, Lent traditionally looks at Jesus entering into the wilderness to experience a time of testing. And that would be quite a normal and reasonable thing for us to investigate. And we're going to be looking at that and referring to it. But alongside that, I want us to look again once more at the Israelites and the Exodus. I don't know about you, but during this season, the story of the Exodus and Jesus' temptation have kind of resonated together. The similarities of wilderness experience, both for Jesus and for the Israelites. And the Exodus is a story that I've been reading over these months of lockdown and gaining a lot from that text. And I'd encourage you to to have a look at that entire chapter. All 40, all 40 chapters of the book of Exodus is something where there's lots that we can learn from. And I'd really encourage you to take some time out, to take your time, don't rush through, but to read those verses over the coming weeks and months. Because God is doing something really significant in the life of Jesus in preparing him for ministry and in the life of the Israelites in preparing them for the promised land. But sometimes our focus can be on the end goal. And even now, I think we've kind of come to this place where we realise that actually no one knows when total normality will return and what that might look like. Many of us are actually hoping that God will challenge us, that the world will be different, more in tune with his rhythm and his ways when we come out of this pandemic experience. And so how does that look? Should we have our eyes just fixed on that? And what are we supposed to be doing now? It's almost a year since the first lockdown was announced. And I bet many, many people never expected to be experiencing the restrictions in the way we are now those 12 months or so ago. And so we can see that sometimes our expectations aren't necessarily in line with what reality is is actually saying. And what we need to do is learn to find from that moment, what in this moment is God doing? Is God asking? Is God prompting and leading me to do? Rather than just fixing our eyes on when this all goes away, then this will happen. We can see that in the experiences of the Israelites and in Jesus. Jesus' eyes aren't fixed on when I come out of this time in the desert, 
then I want to think about this. I'm going to use my time in the desert to plan my strategy and think about X, Y and Z. The Israelites are hoping and longing for the promised land. But God has 40 years worth of teaching and training and honing and law giving and forgiving and covenant building to do in that time. So we find ourselves even today in a wilderness experience. And what I mean by that is one of the kind of definitions of wilderness is that it is uncultivated land. And these times we are experiencing and they'll use it again and again on the news, I know, is the word unprecedented times. But actually, for many of us, it's the fact that it is uncultivated. There isn't a clear path necessarily. Things have changed our parameters in which we operate and in which we socialise, in which we relax, in which we spend our time have shifted. The pathways we're used to and the rhythms of that sort of life that we've taken for granted are now no longer quite the same. And so whether we're kind of going across uncharted territory or it's just a a bit of more of an overgrown pathway for you, it's this sense of being in these times of following an uncultivated path. Even for the church, the church has had very little experience. There isn't a single church leader across our nation that has necessarily led in a pandemic situation where churches have been closed in this way. And so all of us, each one of us are on this playing field of having to seek God, to hear his voice and then be obedient in moving forward. So this series is called Lessons from the Wilderness. What lessons can we glean that both Jesus and the Israelites and others in the biblical text have gained from their times in wilderness? that we can then bring into our own circumstances and our own situations today so that we may not just have experienced this and then moved on but we may be grounded in the lessons that God has given for us because I don't know if you remember many years ago I mean we're probably talking almost 20 years ago or so there was a series of programs on the television round the sort of titles of Brat Camp some of them had different names and different titles but the premise was the same and most of them were based in the states where wayward teenagers often brought in from the UK were flown over to these American style boot camps where basically their selfishness their wayward tendencies and their unacceptable behavior would not be physically beaten out of them but would be removed from their psyche through various different experiences that they would have camping out in the wilds marching for hours and hours and hours having all of their privileges and their home comfort stripped away from them and the kind of the program was kind of interesting and their responses and so on but obviously there was the inevitable backlash about whether this is really an ethical thing to do to young people but also there was the question of is there a long-lasting impact when you pluck a uh, wayward teenager from their home situation and take away all that is put on a plate for them and dump them in another situation where people will shout at them and make them march up and down until they recognize their selfishness and their self-centeredness when they then get back home to their comforts their suburban life do they really bring those lessons from brat camp back with them and that was the kind of the problem that the program had And obviously why it's probably not been repeated and still not on our screens. And my heart for us and for me as an individual and for my family and for our church family is that we will not have the attitude that we are wayward teenagers, that lockdown is the brat camp for our psyche. It is the punishment for our selfishness. It is force being trying to constrict us so that we come back to God in a better way. But that actually when the world changes once again, when restrictions are lifted, we will revert back to how things have been. Because people have very different experiences of life at the moment. Talking spiritually, some people are finding the time and the closeness to God deeper than perhaps ever before. And others are disconnected, find very little time can't kind of resonate maybe with worship on screen 
you're not watching the videos, maybe you haven't seen one of our services for weeks, if not months. Church is just no longer on your radar, let alone God. And that is a very difficult position for us. Because our temptation can be when the surroundings of our life become tougher, that we can have a sense of feeling abandoned and therefore we too abandon. We abandon our faith. We abandon our time we spend with God. We abandon our hope. Sometimes we abandon our friends and those around us who are normally our sources of encouragement. So the first lesson of the wilderness that we should grasp hold of today is number one, to recognise we are in wilderness. We are in uncultivated times. Sometimes there are bits of it that are harder and harsher. We've lost the easiness of a clear pathway. It is sometimes possible to feel neglected and overlooked, abandoned and uncertain, fearful and vulnerable, exposed to the elements. But in recognising the wilderness experience, we have to remember God's promises to those in the wilderness. God did not abandon Jesus and he did not abandon the Israelites. He promises them, I will never leave you or forsake you. In fact, in the Exodus story that you will discover if you read through those chapters, is God's presence was there, God's leading was there, God's appearance to Moses was absolutely incredible. So our lesson as we embark on this first journey, and I invite you to journey with me over the next six weeks or so, as we lead up to the time when we experience the amazing working of God's love and God's power in the death and resurrection of Jesus. In this Lent season, Let us recognise that we are in a wilderness, but God brings forth from wilderness times incredible things. God has not abandoned us or forsaken us. God is not the brat camp master forcing us to behave in a certain way out of punishment. God did not create the circumstances that we are necessarily in, but God is with us in those circumstances. And he has lessons to teach us, not for some glorious end time that we are just counting the seconds by until we can embrace. But God has lessons for us today that will hone us and that we will carry with us for many future days, weeks, months, years and even generations. So as we embark on this journey, I invite you to join with me to lay down our lives where they are and invite God to lead and work in us and through us. We may not know what the future holds. We may not know what is on the horizon, but God's word promises us in Psalm 119 that it will be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. So let us commit to hearing and seeking out God inviting us to lead us during this time together. Let's pray. Father God, for many people, these have been difficult times. Times where life is different. But we recognise now, Lord, that we are entering the season of Lent, which is represented by your son entering the wilderness willingly so that you may prepare him and work in him and ultimately go on to work through him. We recognise the difficulties of circumstance, but God, we come before you now in humble submission, saying in our own and our collective experience, we recognise your presence. We thank you for being with us. Help us to hear your voice more clearly follow your ways more closely and trust you more readily. Amen. to
Still be my vision that I will.